What's going on, everybody? Good afternoon. Uh, Mike McDonald has spoken. Mike McDonald just gave a uh, press conference to the media, and he spoke on many things. He talked about a lot of different subjects, so we're going to go and go through it here. Just kind of take stock of where we stand right now as a team. I know that a lot of the focus is going to be on uh, the release of Tyrell Dodson a few hours ago, but... Um, I don't think very many people liked the way that he was playing. I don't think there were a lot of fans of him at this point. So I think people are going to move off that pretty quickly here. And there is some stuff that <clears throat> McDonald talked about in this press conference that was certainly more significant than whatever's going on at linebacker. But uh, before I get to uh, McDonald's <clears throat> comments, um, I do want to um, talk about the roster news from today. Uh, Kayvon Wallace has gone on injured reserve. So he will be out at least four games. And to fill that roster spot, we have claimed nose tackle Brandon Peely. Don't really know anything about him. I think he's like 316 pounds, I saw. So a little smaller than the average true nose tackle, but he's probably never going to play. He's probably just here for uh, <clears throat> depth purposes while we sort some other things out. But um, yeah, Kayvon Wallace is on injured reserve. I don't think he was playing that well, but he also wasn't playing nearly enough to be evaluated. So I don't have a strong opinion of whether or not that makes things better or worse, or if that's, you know, matters long term or not. <coughs> Excuse me. So not really going to say anything too much about that other than we we actually do need Rayshon Jenkins back just so we have some degree of safety depth. We don't really have anything right now. So yeah, hurry back, Rayshon. All right. So. McDonald's comments, let's start with some of these injury notes because they're mostly good. Corbin's got this. Um, Metcalf is expected to practice on Wednesday, which would mean he's a mortal lock to play on Sunday. So we can at least say with a good amount of reliability and accuracy, we're getting DK Metcalf back. And he also said it is realistic for Abe Lucas to play against the Niners. So expect to see Abe Lucas as a maybe full participant on Wednesday would be the inference from that, I think. But the point is, we're about to find out. And this might be the most intriguing subplot going on with the whole Seahawks team right now. Can Abe Lucas make it back and stay back for these next eight games? If he does, maybe that's a guy you bet on going into next season. If he doesn't, I think you got to cut the cord at least mentally. Maybe you're not literally going to cut him, but mentally, you need to cut that cord and say, we need a new right tackle in the offseason. It sucks, but you got to do what you got to do. So big stuff happening there. And I hope it goes the right way. That would be such a load off our minds if Abe Lucas plays high quality football for the next eight games. And we're at least going into 2025 knowing there's a real chance that we have our guy. Right. So... Uh, McDonald talked a little bit more about the um, the uh, offensive line as well. One thing that really caught my attention after he talked about Abe Lucas was talking about Connor Williams. According to McDonald from this Greg Bell tweet, coaches have considered moving starting center Connor Williams to improve one of the guard spots, but for now, Williams is remaining at center. So one interesting thing about that comment is that implies that Connor Williams is not refusing to move to guard. Um, presumably it would be something that he would kill before it could even be considered. Now, maybe McDonald just doesn't want to reveal that Connor Williams refuses to move positions. So therefore he's just going to say they're not going to do it. And he's going to be vague about exactly why I understand that there's plenty of room for conspiratorial thinking here, but either way, Williams does remain at center. Bradford will start at right guard, and it appears Lake and Tomlinson will start at left guard. I think, Greg, just a typo. So nothing's really going to change in terms of the personnel in the middle, which I will concede there's probably no winning move here. But what, what, what I will say is that I'm starting to lose my belief that this is going to get better as these players develop synergy. It's been two months, and it's not getting better. If anything, it feels like it's gotten a little bit worse. So I don't think you're losing anything by mixing and matching. But the fact that he did say that thing about Connor Williams moving to guard, and it's apparently actually a possibility, is very interesting because 
Connor Williams is both bad at snapping the ball and he's also a turnstile right now in my estimation. So maybe moving to guard would help with both those things. If he doesn't have to snap, maybe he can get his head up quicker and focus on the block a little bit earlier and maybe that would help prevent him from being blown by as much as he is by these defenders. So I'm totally open to this idea. Get Lakin out of here. Get Bradford out of here. One of those two guys. Move Connor. See if Olu Watimi can do it. Or Jalen Sundle even. Like, I usually don't get like this about this kind of stuff. I usually am not trying to scrape the back of the the roster. I'm usually not digging at the bottom of the roster barrel, I guess would be a better metaphor there. But in this case, I actually feel like there might be a solution there that's better. Uh, Noah Fant... We got more vagaries from McDonald. He said he's doing well, but he's not sure about this upcoming game, which means I guess he's not doing that well. But um, this doesn't sound like somebody who's going to be back immediately. By the way, it is worth noting the Seahawks signed um, <coughs> Nikhil Harry uh, as a tight end. So I think Noah Fan's going to miss a little bit more time here, and maybe that's not the end of the world, but life would be a little bit easier if we at least had him for... Even if it's just 20 snaps a game, I think his playmaking ability does matter. Uh, no update on George Fant, but if you read between the lines on uh, McDonald's comments when asked about George Fant, sounds like he's going back on IR. Uh, a lot of people inferred from his comment. Like, you don't see that from uh, Boyle here, but there were other tweets where people speculated that I think Fant's going to be going um, onto uh, IR. But... Um, yeah, that's got to be the end of it, right? You play 15 snaps, you go on IR, you come back, you play 15 snaps, you go back on IR, like, that that's some, his body's trying to tell him, just retire, dude, you've made enough money. Or maybe he hasn't, I don't know, but the point is, that's got to be it for George Fant, right? So it's Abe Lucas or nothing to save this team, save this offensive line a little bit. All right, so moving on to uh, this Brady Henderson uh, update. McDonald said rookie fourth-round pick Tyrese Knight will get the first crack at replacing Dodson at weak side linebacker. I will say, I think Knight played fairly well when Baker was hurt, so I'm open to the idea of Knight getting more more reps here. Uh, I still think this, like, this kind of goes back to the whole Dodson release thing, and I will be honest... I, I feel like this whole situation kind of makes the team look foolish. The fact that they sign linebackers in the offseason and they don't even make it halfway through the year, or barely make it halfway through the year before they're off the team entirely. I do think that people externally look at something like that and they go, that is a dysfunctional organization to whiff twice at the same position, basically. Like, if it was one one thing, if it was one player... That'd be a fluke. And maybe then they'd say, oh, let's praise the organization for being willing to do something this drastic because the player just isn't getting it done. That shows you how much they want to win. There are cases where I think that would be the takeaway, but here this feels like they were just uh, shocked at how inadequate these players were. They didn't understand what they needed. And I do think it makes the team look a little bit silly right now. And every now and then this team will do something that makes them look silly to everybody else and I try to call it out when I notice it, this feels like one of those things, and it's one of those things you recognize at the time, not in hindsight. Also mentions Drake Thomas could play a little bit in some packages, which, sure, I'm, I'm not going to be against it, and Ernest Jones IV will take over the green dot. That might have been the thing keeping Dodson on the team as long as he was. I do wonder, if it weren't for the green dot, if... Dodson would have been gone a week earlier, maybe at the deadline. Maybe we would have just shuffled him off for a sixth round pick in three years or something just to get something. Maybe clear a little bit of that cap space. I, I don't know. But the green dot may have saved Dodson for that for that Rams game, basically. All right, so that's that's it for the Dodson stuff. Again, there's a lot more that can be pulled apart there. And... Again, I mean, I don't think he was playing that well, so I'm not against this decision. It just, in if you look at the big picture, it just makes us look like a little bit of a dysfunctional organization, I think. Mm -hmm. So, the um, Abe Lucas, by the way, Brady Henderson points this out, has to be activated off the PUP by Wednesday. 
So this Wednesday is not only a little bit of a soft checkpoint for the Abe Lucas stuff, but it's actually a hard checkpoint. If he gets activated, we've got a chance. If he's not activated, that means he's out for the year and it's just over. It, it's just, there's nothing left to say. So if you want to, if you are want some finality on Abe Lucas, you will pretty much have it by Wednesday. So don't worry, it's coming. And uh, yeah, here's Brady Henderson talking a little, bit about, a little bit about how Fant could go on IR. And it seems like that's probably what's going on here. And that may be the open roster spot that Lucas needs. So it looks like Fant's probably played his last snap as a Seahawk, which was a very, very small amount of snaps before he got hurt. But um, might be his last snaps in the NFL. Who knows? Uh, one thing that Nemhauser tweeted about that kind of caught my attention in an interesting way is that he asked McDonald if they did midseason performance meetings with individuals the way teams typically do exit interviews at the end of the year. And McDonald says they did, which is not typical. So I'm going to go ahead and close this video with this. I think that it would be fair to characterize this first season for McDonald as a little bit disappointing because he wasn't really able so far to do that much to improve the defense from last year. But I do feel pretty strongly this is the right guy to get the, get it done and be the guy who can fix this and make things better down the line because I really like his approach here. He gave an, an answer about Tyrell Dodson being let go and basically the, the way he talks about it, it makes me feel like this is going to work out. It's just not going to work out right now. The way he was talking about how my scheme calls for our linebackers to do a lot. There's a lot on these linebackers to do the right thing, and we just need to find those right guys. That excites me for when we do find that guy. So I just want to close with that. Um, I, I still believe in this coach. I still believe in this coaching regime. I'm a little disappointed that they weren't able to get better results immediately, but I also understand that ultimately their success or failure will not be determined by what they do immediately. It's going to be determined by what they do next year, the year after, the year after that. That's what's going to really count here. Nobody's going to be upset that we won eight games in 2024 if we win the Super Bowl in 2027 with this uh, regime. All right. See you guys later. Go Hawks. Uh, be on Twitch later tonight. Going back to Metaphor. Don't know when I will be on, but I will be. Probably no more videos today. Again, it's going to be a very slow week because we didn't have a game, but uh, I'll... I'll uh, I'll talk about what needs to be talked about, and we'll reconvene soon. See you guys later. Go Hawks.